three years ago, the chief medical officer of the maternity ward of a leading uh, UK-based uh, hospital was asking us um, whether we can look at the data of the maternity ward to try to identify if the recent uh, cut in staff had any impact on uh, patient outcomes. The workload that the unit experiences is highly variable. There are days where the number of uh, women delivering could be 20 or 25, and there are days where there's only four or five uh, women delivering. And the number of midwives is uh, pretty much fixed. That doesn't change day to day. The midwife, which is assigned to, to the delivering mother, uh, acts partially as the care provider, but also as the gatekeeper to most specialist resources, such as physicians that can complete uh, the delivery. Gatekeepers have the job of deciding which is the appropriate level of resource required by the patient. Uh, so the research question uh, that, that this paper tries to, to, to address is whether uh, there are differences in the process of delivering babies and in the outcomes that mothers and, and babies experience when you compare these busy days to, to days when they're not so busy. We find that midwives have two levers with which they manage their workload. The first is uh, on the form of pain relief to be used, and this decision is made in conjunction with, uh, with the mother. And the second decision is uh, on whether to get a physician involved in the delivery. The way they use these levers depends on uh, how complex uh, the, the delivery is. For relatively low complexity cases, they withdraw epidural injections, but they do not escalate to, to physicians uh, with uh, high probability. And vice versa for complex cases. For complex cases, they tend not to withdraw the epidural injection, but instead they are more likely to refer to physician for uh, uh, physician-led delivery. Comparing uh, high workload spells to low workload spells, we find that mothers are less likely to be administered an epidural injection. A and the difference is quite substantial. Uh, about uh, a third of uh, mothers that would have received an epidural at low workload conditions do not receive an epidural at high workload conditions. And this is bigger, uh, this has more explanatory power than any uh, medical uh, variable uh, that's at least in the data. The other thing they do at high workload conditions, again compared to low workload conditions, is to refer more uh, mothers to uh, be delivered by a physician. About 15% of, of the mothers that get a referral to be delivered by a physician at high workload conditions wouldn't have gotten this referral if the workload conditions were low. By managing their workload using these two levers, uh, I think it's important to note that midwives manage uh, the clinical outcomes uh, quite well. So there's no substantial difference in the outcomes uh, of uh, either the mother or the baby uh, between busy and non-busy spells. What differs though is the costs. So at busy spells, non-complex cases uh, become cheaper because the epidural injection is withdrawn and the epidural injection is itself uh, sort of expensive, but also mothers that do receive an epidural injection tend to need longer to recover in the postnatal unit. The opposite is true for complex cases. Uh, at high workloads, complex ca cases are referred to physicians and therefore become more expensive because a more expensive specialist resource is used. I believe our work has uh, implications for uh, industries other than, than healthcare. In many organizations, uh, key resources are being protected by gatekeepers. And our research suggests that the ability of the gatekeepers to uh, prescribe the more specialist resources efficiently depends on the gatekeeper's workload itself. They tend to do this more efficiently when they're not uh, extremely busy, but also when they're not uh, sort of too quiet.